this year as well, because video junkie. So we have y equals negative 5 cosine of pi x equal, um, divided by 6. So the first thing I want you guys to do, don't even worry about graphing right now. There's a couple important things we need to figure out. Before you even start to graph, let's figure out the important parts. And these are ones that I've talked about over and over. All right? The first thing is determining the amplitude. And remember, the amplitude is going to be the absolute value of a. All right? This is part of like the vocabulary, ladies and gentlemen. We got to make sure we can remember how to do this. So this one's pretty basic. Absolute value of negative 5, we know is going to be 5. So that's going to tell us the half distance between the maximum point on my graph and the minimum point um, of the graph. Then let's determine the period. Now, I think some of you guys got a little bit of taste of how period can come some, sometimes get confusing because remember, period is 2 pi divided by b. Now, b is not always going to be a simple number. If you look in here, my b is going to be pi being divided by 6. So therefore, it looks something like this, 2 pi divided by pi divided by 6. So your b is going to be pi divided by 6. You've got to make sure you add that in. So now, to simplify this, I multiply by the reciprocal. Right? That multiplies over to 1. Now, my pi's divide into 1, and I'm left with a period of 12. All right? Then the next thing, right when, I, right when I determine what my period is, if you guys remember when I talked about the parent graph, remember we had our critical points. Between every critical point was an even distance. So what I like to do is I always like to determine what is the critical points, um, what is the distance between the critical points. So to do that, all you need to do is take your period and divide it by 4. So therefore, I get a distance of 3. That means between each critical point, x-intercept, um, y-intercept, or not a x-intercept, max, min, they're all going to have a distance of 3. The next thing is we go through our start and our end. Um, so we're going to look at this, and we want to see, is there going to be any distance in our, um, is there going to be any change in the start and the end? Because usually what we like to do is start with our one given period. So if you remember, the start is always you take what's inside your function and set that equal to 0. So here I'm going to have pi x divided by 6 equals 0. And my end, I do the same thing, but I'm going to set it equal to 2 pi. And the reason, again, you start it to 2 pi, because remember, in your initial parent graph, the start and the end of our, parent, of our first period is from 0 to 2 pi. So if by solving for x, I get x equals 0. And for solving for x here, I get x equals 12. OK. So what that means is when we have an initial period, we're going to start at 0. We're going to go to we're going to go to 12. Um, the distance between each one of my critical points is 3. I'm going to have an amplitude of 5. Notice there's a negative. So therefore, I'm going to have a reflection. And that's a reflection of my x-axis. And therefore, and OK, so that's about all we need. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my start point right there. So remember, we have our four critical points. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to go in the positive and the negative direction. So remember, I said the critical points, the distance between the critical points, your period divided by 4 is 3. That means each one of these distances is 3. So if you just kind of add it up, 3, 6, 9, 12. Negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12. Does that kind of make sense? And that also, you can see, that's going to be your distance of your period. All right, so now we need to remember what cosine even looks like. Well, remember the parent graph of cosine started at, uh, starts at 1, uh, has a y-intercept of 1, 0. That would have been our start point. However, here, so let's actually graph 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So usually cosine would start here, and then it goes down to its x-intercept. However, we have a reflection, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's a reflection. So instead of our cosine graph starting up at 1, we're actually going to reflect over the x-axis, and it's going to start down at negative 5. Then it's going to get to the next critical point, which is your x-intercept. Then it's going to go up to 5 at the next critical intercept, which will be our maximum point. Then goes down to 9, and then go down to 
negative 5 again. So you can see at each critical point, right, I'm going to at each one of those intercepts, I'm going to have a critical point. Either they're going to be an intercept or a max or a min. Then I can just continue the graph in the negative direction. And you can see there's a graph of two full periods with negative, um, negative 5 cosine of pi x divided by 6. Any preguntas? No? Questions? OK. Right. Exactly. All right, that's it. Cool.